Welcome to Strange Familiars. Allison, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It's good to hear. On tonight's show, I'm going to be talking with Jacob, who heard our Witch Digger show and heard our call for accounts from Indiana. He brought a lot to the show. So we're first, in this episode, we're going to hear his Bigfoot accounts or things that sound like Bigfoot. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he said he's been on other podcasts talking about that, but these other podcasts, they only want his Bigfoot stuff. They didn't want to hear about his paranormal stuff. I said, oh, no, no, I want him. I want it all. So next week, he'll be back, and he'll be talking about his paranormal stuff. So we have a, a, like kind of a Hoosier-centric run here for a while. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of appropriate. Mm-hmm. We should get Brett Manning on, too. She's, she's a Hoosier. <laughs> I've invited Brett on before, and you know, it was a tentative yes, and then we just kind of She's got the best sense of humor. There's certain people that are like, I know, kind of related to the strange familiars world that I just like, I don't know them on any level, but I just appreciate their humor, like Zoe and Brett. And there's just a bunch of people who I just kind of know on the periphery. And you you know, like that feeling where you feel like you get to know people's personalities online. I had asked Brett to come on to promote her art book. And then it just kind of, I'll have to have her on. I'll have to reconnect. We'll have to do that. Yes, I will be leaving for Indiana next week. Speaking of witch diggers, Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk a little bit about witch diggers research because I've been approached by multiple people. I just wanted to address a couple things. We are aware of the Jennings County Historical Society website. We've seen all the information there. If we didn't present it in the episode, it's because we're not sure the information is accurate yet. It's not because we didn't find it. We are also aware of the Bishler family trees that are on Ancestry. To put it kindly, they're not correct. Yeah, not all of them. Yeah, people have information that's... It's not accurate. Yeah. We're aware of all this stuff. It's not that we didn't find it. We found it, Mm -hmm. and we did more research. We know Nick Bishler's military records. We have them. He was not dishonorably discharged. We know where he ended up. We will be sharing all of this information in our book. we got to keep something for the book. Historical societies, they're great sources of information, but they're not always the correct information. And I learned this with the Hermit book as well. A lot of times they're printing the legend. A lot of times they're printing local people's memories of things, which are often not correct. Or sometimes it's just um, they have a lot of information but there's more to learn. I right. think that's actually the case. Like oh, yeah. a lot of the information isn't entirely Think, correct, but there. But uh, there's just a lot more to be. There's always get, more to learn. Things get conflated when it comes to weird behaviors or weird things that we discuss on the show. People like to have explanations for that, and sometimes they make them up. Mm-hmm. You know, we see this in Bigfoot accounts and these historical Bigfoot accounts all the time. Oh, so, oh they, it's a bear. They saw a raccoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, come on. So we're aware of all this information. If we didn't present it in the show, it's not because we weren't aware of it. It's because we decided that... It didn't fit the narrative as we knew it so far, I think, there you a go. lot of yeah. it. The book will have all this information and more. We're on it. I promise. We got it. So I guess I'll have a lot of stuff I'm bringing back from Indiana. Mm-hmm. You wait to see what show I produce next week on my own oh, okay. and put out while you're gone. You have no idea what's going to happen. There might be a lot of Indiana content coming up here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I imagine there will be. There's so much we have to do out there, like an incredible amount of stuff we have to cover. It will probably be more than one visit, I'm thinking. But we'll see what we can get done on this first visit. Super excited. Super, super excited. I feel like... I've said it before, this was the first specifically Strange Familiars thing, the first three episodes being based on my book. You know, Mm -hmm. this was like the first thing I did with Josh, and I feel like it's been waiting for me in a sense. And and I I feel so privileged and happy to finally be able to go to this property 
and dig in deep and, and dig in deep. <laughs> pun partially intended. Yeah. And see what we can get. So I'm super excited about that. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk to Jacob. I'd like to welcome Jacob to Strange Familiars. How are you doing today? Going on, Tim. Well, I'm excited to talk to you. You heard our Wistiger show and you contacted me and said you're from the general area of southern Indiana. Is that correct? Yep. Yes, sir. 40 miles north, Louisville, Kentucky. Yep. Lived here my whole life. Awesome. I'm 38 years old. Been here for a little bit. Super interested to get your experiences and you said you got some Bigfoot stuff, and, and I'd like to start with that, if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's fine. I've talked to a few people, and yeah, that's usually where they everybody wants to start at. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, th- did all this happen in uh, in Indiana for you? Yeah, it's all happened right here in Indiana. And I've had a few experiences down by the, the Ohio River, close to Kentucky there. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens around here. <laughs> Well, what was the first thing that, that happened that sort of set you in, in mind of Bigfoot? Well, before I actually even knew much about it, I mean, you know, I grew up, my dad was always into sci-fi and everything like that. I've seen the Patterson film and all that stuff. And, you know, I always thought it was a possibility and whatnot, but never would have thought in Indiana. But, you know, as I got a little older, become a teenager and stuff, started uh, deer hunting and turkey hunting and all that good stuff and i had a buddy his dad let me uh hunt in his tree stand you know my parents let me skip school to go deer hunt through the week my buddy's dad would let me sit in his tree stand well you pull off the road i mean it's just a few miles down the road from where i live at now and i mean i've my mom and dad live like five miles down the road from me so i mean i didn't go very far growing up so (laughs) well anyway you pull off the road there into a hay field and i'd pull all the way to the the back end of it and it's completely surrounded by woods with a little creek down the bottom and there's an old uh skitter trail from where they logged it goes straight up the hill i'd park at the bottom of that there and i would get out and i'd walk up at that hillside and uh, it was bow season, so all I had was a bow. Back then, I was young. I didn't have any pistols or anything, so I never carried anything like that with me. I just had an old junkie bow, nothing special. And I'm heading up this skitter trail. Well, I'd hear something over to the right of me. You know, as a teenager growing up and stuff, I always just thought it was coyotes, like doing contact calls to each other, like maybe letting each other know something i mean i don't know why the hell i would have that in my mind because i mean i don't think they do that but Mm -hmm. that's just what i was thinking and i did a little more research into looking into sounds and stuff for animals around here and it ended up being a sound really similar to barred owls that when they're courting each other they make a little cooing sound to each other but this was right on the ground i mean probably if i was guessing within 20 feet of me to my right i'd hear this sound and go oh i mean if you heard bard house you may have heard that sound before yeah i think i know what you're talking about <laughs> i can't sound exactly like it but i'd hear that sound there interesting there's there's a place and, we go to called site seven and and we were recording bard house pretty consistently there for a while so yeah i'm, I'm pretty familiar with that yeah. sound yeah i mean we've got bard owls here they're always down by the lake a couple lakes we fish at and stuff and so i mean i'm familiar with them you know and they do the the who cooks for you sound mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. everybody likes that and they're they're a pretty big bird really oh yeah i've seen them plenty of times down there right at dusk fly across the lake but anyways as i'm going up that skitter trail i hear that sound to my right and you know i was like oh man you know it, you just get that fear a little bit in you i was you know, I had in my mind it was coyotes, and I keep going. Then there's one to my left of me does the same thing. And as I keep going up the trail, I mean, I, I only got probably 
a hundred yards, give or take, to get to the top of this hill, and it's a pretty steep incline. So I mean, you're not going to really walk it real fast. But as I get up, I mean, they just keep going on either side of me, and I, I get to the top. You know, never heard another sound, never heard a stick break, nothing. I get all the way up there, and I, there's a four wheeler trail off the side of it. And I walk down there, and probably I don't really remember, maybe 50 yards or so would be my buddy's dad's tree stand so i climbed up it it was just a ladder stand and uh i got up in there and i was you know thinking about it i was like you know constantly looking around you know never did see nothing no coyotes or nothing hear nothing run around or anything and the sun starts coming up and then i start hearing the school bus i hear the school buses go down the road because the road's not too far back behind me i mean it's a pretty good ways you couldn't see none of the vehicles or anything going down the road. And, you know, people going to work in the morning. And after all that kind of calmed down, so, I mean, it's probably around 7.30-ish, 8 o'clock, and maybe a little, I don't know exactly. I mean, it was a long time ago, exact on the times anyway. <laughs> but it was just real early morning there. And just down over to the left of me where I was sitting in the stand, it kind of just drops down into like a little washout ditch, kind of like a gully or whatever, when it rains. And there's a bunch of big briar bushes down there. And there was something, well, I didn't hear anything down in there, just out of nowhere. Just something goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Just, <laughs> about, you know, I about crapped my pants. And I mean, everything was just dead quiet after that. And, and I'm just sitting there. I mean, my eyes were probably bigger than golf balls. <laughs> and I didn't know uh, what to think. You know, I was sitting there, and I, I got already had a arrow knocked in my bow, you know, just ready for a deer come up or whatever. And I'm sitting there just shaking. And uh, I've never heard of anybody having any uh, gorillas or, or any, uh, you know, gorillas being loose in Indiana. So, <laughs> but bigfoot never came to mind to me Is it? but the first thing it did come to mind to me which I've, I've told this story before on a, a few other podcasts the first thing that come to my mind is i was with my mom a year or so before then before i had my driver's license and we were coming up the road and where's the power line cut we got the big giant metal power lines that run through out here you know they're huge Is it? And I seen a giant black cat. I'm not talking like the size of a, a black lab or a big dog or, you know, there weren't no mistake in it. I mean, I've been to the circus several times with my children and stuff like that. And I mean, this thing was just as big as a, a female African lion. I mean, or pretty close to it anyway. Wow. I mean, it was huge. And it had its tail straight up in the air. It was walking through the weeds. And I could see, you know, the ass end of the cat. And his tail was straight up. And he was just rucking his tail side to side like a house cat does when it's, you know, completely comfortable walking around or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it scared me to death. I tried to get my mom to look at it. And I can't remember what re She wouldn't pay no attention to me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no. And we drove right on past it. No, I mean, no, the, the I, power line, the power line cut there is only like a couple hundred feet wide or so, maybe 400, 500 feet at the most, something like that. But go ahead. What was you going to say? I saw a mountain lion, a cougar, normal colored, in Maryland yeah. one time. I was working for my dad used to have a telephone company. I worked for him doing installation and stuff. About 10 in the morning, I was on my way to a job. And it was just walking through this field near my dad's farm. And I was like, that's a mountain lion. Holy cow, right? But, right. you know, they're not supposed to be in Maryland. But okay, you know, it's a, it's a somewhat natural creature. The next day, though, the same exact time in the morning. It was 10 in the morning, but I was driving with my brother this time. My brother was driving. I was in the passenger seat. Same place, same field, same time of day. I see this thing again. And I'm talking to my brother. I'm like, hey, look at that. Look, look, there's a mountain lion. And it's like. He, it didn't register with him. It's so right. weird. Like the, the, your description of that is like, it just gave me chills. Cause it was the same thing. 
it's like he didn't care. And, and I mean, my brother's in the woods as much as I am. He should be interested in something right. like that, being around the farm. Yeah, well, you would say something like that. You'd think someone would just turn their head immediately. Yeah. Or but, s- you know, the best of my memory, she just didn't even acknowledge me at all. That's exactly but. what happened with my brother. He just, I think he might have gone, uh huh, and just kept driving. And I th- I was like, no, look, look, look. And he just, it just didn't register with him. That is odd. That uh, is really interesting the way you described that. It, just, it gave me chills. Sorry, go ahead with your story. Yeah, it's, but that was when I was sitting there in that tree stand. That's the first thing I thought of. Mm, and I yeah. was terrified because I remembered how big it was. And I just had this little junky bow. I mean, it was definitely good enough to kill a deer with. I mean, but, but you know, a big predator, I mean, what you going to do? Mm-hmm. Right, right. I continued on sitting there, just scared to death for quite a while. And, you know, I never heard another sound, never heard leaves, never heard nothing move. Never seen a deer, turkey, never seen anything the whole rest of that morning. I mean, I sat there for a couple more hours. God was just scared to death. And, you know, I finally got the courage to get up and get down. I got down and walked back down and never really thought too much of it again other than until I started having other experiences and listening to a podcast as I've gotten a lot, a little bit older here. What is this? Really getting into the stuff. Yeah, I was like, uh, and I've heard other people talk about the, that gorilla sound. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what it, that's what it sounded like. I tried to tell my buddy's dad about it, and he said, "Well, down the road over there on the other side of the road, he said there's a donkey up there." I said, "Well, it wasn't a donkey." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I've grown up around horses and donkeys and mules. My wife's uh, grandfather he had mules, and you know, I used to brush them, and you know, I did all kinds of stuff for him over there. You know, helping the old man out. And, I mean. A donkey or a mule don't sound like a, a gorilla. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was. I'll, I'll never forget that. But I, whenever I'd hear those barred out sounds going up the trail, I've heard that many a times. I mean, even riding four wheelers in the past, being out fishing, I've heard it. It don't sound quite right. It's like a lot of people say, you know, it sounds like a, an eight hundred pound owl or a five hundred pound owl. And I've, I've experienced that a couple of times, just hearing that owl sound. But it don't sound like the barn owls because I've heard them making that sound too, and you know they sound normal. Listen. And then it's huh, that one ain't right. Yeah, but, you know who knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about it on the. I mean, that's the first memory I have of that. You know, and you know all the years of hunting and stuff. You know, you hear the loud sticks breaking. And- the stuff back here and, and was, you know i always thought you know here's well, there's a deer coming a big buck maybe you know nothing ever shows up uh-huh. and you know i've heard the the wood knock several times too out well, who knows what that is really i had this guy because i do a lot of catfishing and i used to work with him in a sawmill here in uh, salem indiana and uh I'd go down the river. I'd catch big old catfish and stuff. He'd hit me up on Messenger on Facebook, bugging me all the time because I'd post pictures of, you know, me catching some pretty good-sized catfish down there. And uh, he's like, man, I want to get down there and catch some big old catfish. I'm like, man, he just kept bugging me, bugging me all the time. So finally, we went a couple of times. And, I mean, he's all right, feller, but he just really wasn't my type of person I like to hang out with. But anyways, we're down here at the Ohio River. It's called the Falls of the Ohio. It's a state park, I guess. Or, but anyways, I mean, it's right there in town of old Clarksville. And on the other side of the flood wall, there's it's a subdivision, houses everywhere. You look around the bend from where we were setting up to fish, you know, you can see Louisville on the other side. So we're down there. And the flood water had w- just went down, and uh, we were walking back through the, the trails back behind the museum down there, and we get down through the woods. You know, it's a, it's a pain in the butt getting down through there. There's logs, piles of debris, all kinds of crap down there from the flood waters receded. There's sand and pea gravel. I mean, it, it's 
kind of tough going down through there. You got your fishing poles, and you know we carry backpacks. You know they're pretty heavy. But anyways, we get on down to the river and get our poles set up and stuff, and get our bait out in the water. Sitting there, we're just shooting the crap about whatever. And I think what happened first, I started seeing rocks hitting the water down by one of my poles. It's about a foot out in the water. And after I seen a few of them or so, I said something to him and I was like, dude, I was like, you see them rocks keep hitting them? I said, somebody's throwing rocks. And he's like, oh man, them are shad jumping down there. <laughs> he said, I seen the splashes down there. And I was like, man, I was like, I've been fishing down here for years and years and years. I, I know what shad look like or any kind of little bait fish jumping around down there. I mean, this was little splashes of rocks were hitting the water, little pebbles. <laughs> and uh, we were just sitting there and talking and stuff. And next thing I know, I, mean, I look up and I'm looking towards the west from where we're sitting at. And, you know, it's it's already dark. I don't know, probably at this point, it's probably around 10 p.m., maybe closer to 11. I'm not sure. I don't remember exact. But um, sitting there and I look up to the west there. And there's three lights up in the sky. There's just three lights in the sky. You know, they look like stars almost, but, I mean, they're bigger than stars. They're just like the color of a bright star. You know, it's a white light. And I'm looking at it, and they're, they're just three in a straight line. Looks like they're, you know, spaced out a couple of inches apart from the distance away they were. They're starting to move towards the north. Well, the front one goes out. It's like it just blinked out. Then the two behind it, the first one moves up to its spot, and the last one moves up to the middle spot, then another one appears behind it. Hmm. It continuously keeps happening. And I'm like, dude, I was like, you see that up there? And he's like, what the, you know, what the hell is that? And I was like, dude, I was like, I think those are UFOs up there, man. You know, he's like, no, man, no, there ain't no way. Hey, you know, he's a pretty religious feller, you know, goes to church and stuff all all the time and all that. He just he don't believe in none of that stuff and you know, he made it clear to me that he don't believe in any of this stuff. Is this? And the whole time this is happening, I'm still seeing those rocks hitting the water ever so often. You know, we keep talking about stuff or whatever and he just ain't having it. He just I don't really remember what he said if he said they're airplanes or what, I mean, but it obviously wasn't because, I mean, this cycle of the one blinking out in the front and the other two moving forward, I mean, this happened with, I mean, there would probably been 30 to 50, maybe more that had cycled in that whole time. I don't remember if it just disappeared or, or what happened. I don't really remember because it's starting to get activity behind us in the woods because we're down on the mud and there's a little section of woods behind us and it goes up so far it's the roots are all exposed on the ground and stuff and there's big boulders and stuff like that down there and then it gets up so far and it's sand and pea gravel with all the remains of the flood the, the water receded and then it gets to the flood wall and goes you know it's just a big berm of dirt they keep the grass cut on and stuff where you know, people walk on top of it uh-huh. or a walking trail, I guess. And then on the other side of that's all them houses. Well, I'm sitting there talking about that or whatever, and I start hearing like sticks crunching back. Like somebody has maybe like a handful of small sticks, little twigs, maybe something like that. And I could, they sound like they're just crunching. Like someone's just twisting them in their hands and they're, you know, I look, I'm like, what the hell is that, man? I was like, there's somebody back here. You know, we keep shining our lights and stuff back there. And there ain't, you know, I don't see no people. There's homeless people down there and stuff on the river and stuff, too. I mean, they're, I've had them several times spook me, <laughs> just sneak up on you down there. But I couldn't find anybody back behind us. And the rocks are still hitting the water. They're just ever so often. We uh, sit there talking or so, and I... I go, maybe I heard another sound or something. I don't know. I turned around to 
shine a light. Well, I seen a light back on in the woods. It was back in a pretty good ways about where that walking trail is where we came in at where the, the pea gravel and the sand is. And I'm looking at it, you know, and it look, kind of looks like an, an LED light. It's a perfect round ball. And it's like a the bluish color with the, like how an LED light is What's in this? a way. This? But it wasn't admitting no light at all. What is this? It's just sailing down through there. I mean, at a speed that maybe like somebody that jogs all the time. So probably like five mile an hour or so. I'm just guessing. This? But I was just like, think, I thought about it. You know, this is a couple of years ago. That would probably be about the speed of it if you were like jogging at a good speed. But this thing is just coming down through here in a smooth motion. And it's not shaking side to side. It's not admitting no light. And I was like, dude, I was like, you see that? What the hell is that? He's like, well, I thought that was a headlight off a car or something. Like, there ain't no road over there, dude. The road's on the other side of the flood wall. And I was like, you would hear it. You know, you hear a car or a motorcycle or, you know, anything, you'd hear it. I know this. So there ain't nothing. And I look back, and it's right back at the very beginning where I where it started. And it's coming down the trail again. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> you know, it really screwed in my head a little bit there. I was like, I mean, that it had went back at least 50 to 70 yards or so. I mean, it just repeated itself. Uh -huh. I didn't know what to think about that. And and then it was gone. So, you know, I start telling him about all the Bigfoot stuff I've seen. I was like, dude, I was like, I've heard all this stuff a hundred times about they could throw rocks, they're breaking sticks. You see these orbs out in the woods, which I've never seen in my life. It's the only time I've ever seen an actual orb with the Bigfoot situation anyway. Well, what I think is a Bigfoot. Anyways, it disappears. We're sitting there talking about it, and he's not, still not having it. Don't believe in this stuff. Bigfoot's not real. Okay. Well, we're sitting there, and the rocks, I'm starting to get more rocks hitting the water a little more faster. And out of nowhere, just boom. I mean, if I could guess, something picked up a big old piece of driftwood or a rotten log or something and just bashed it against a tree because it exploded. You could hear all the little pieces of debris from whatever it was, just scatter through everything. And I looked at him. I said, dude, we need to get the hell out of here right now. And he's like, yeah, let's go. And it's probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning by then, maybe a little later. Hell, I don't remember exactly. So we get down there, start reeling our poles in, throwing our bait off our hooks, hooking our hooks on. Well, them rocks are hitting the water faster. And these are just, like I said, like maybe pebble-sized rocks. They're not making huge splashes. Well, at this point, I'm reeling in that last pole. Well, the splashes are getting a little bigger, like a little bit bigger rocks. What is it? I'm starting to freak out a little bit. So I'm cranking that pole in, get it in, throw my backpack on and stuff. And I'm like, you ready? And then he's getting ready to walk right into the woods, right where that log just got exploded back behind us. And I was like, dude. I'm not going in those woods. <laughs> I was like, we're going to walk back up the river and around the, because it's a big, uh, big flat rock out there when the water's down. Is it? And uh, it's a fossil bed. I mean, it's a, and a lot of people go down there to look at the fossils and all that stuff. So we're walking up the side of the river there. It transitions into rock. So we're climbing up on the side of the rock here. And it's got a big rock face wall as you're walking up beside it, it's probably, I don't know, eight or 10 feet over your head. And we get down to the corner of it, you know, you go probably, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, and then it just makes a straight corner around, and then you won't be able to see where we were fishing at once you get around that corner. And it's just rock wall all the way down through there, and you gotta walk about, I don't know, 70, 100 yards, give or take, and, uh, you can get up through there, but by the museum again and back to the parking lot. 
Well, I get to that corner, and we kind of stopped to maybe readjust our backpacks or something. And about then, I went to just look back, and this thing, whatever it was, man, it roared so freaking loud at me or at us, and my knees just buckled. And huh. I almost fell on the ground. Yeah. And I go to music festivals with, the, you know, I've heard plenty of people say, you know, it's like being at a Slayer concert, or you know, just a percussion off them speakers just beating on you. It was pretty similar to that. And, I mean, it just, just rocked your guts for you. Yeah. Just shook me to, you know, I mean, I almost fell down. My buddy there with me, and he just like, what the hell was that? <laughs> no, man. You know, I've listened to so many people's descriptions of these roars, and you know, I mean, they're dead on with it, with uh, sounding like uh, the African lion. And I've heard a few people talking about how, like, alligators uh, bellow. Mm -hmm. Pretty similar, just that deep, bassy, just the most scariest damn sound you ever hear in your life in the middle of the night trying to get out of the river. Mm. And I was scared to death that that thing was just going to come jumping down off the rocks. In my mind, it seemed like it was just, we did not see it. It just seems like it was just like it was right there in that spot that we were fishing at. Mm -hmm. From right, that's, I mean, that's just kind of the way I just pictured it in my mind. That's where the noise come from. And I mean, it hit me like a train. I mean, the fear was pretty intense. And I was just so scared. I was like, dude, let's go. And we started going on through the rocks. And you can't run down there. There's so many little holes and stuff like that. I mean, if you ran, you'd probably end up falling, and you'd get hurt pretty bad just falling down. Mm -hmm. We got on up there and got to where the museum part was and got back up to the car. And what well, was my old junky truck I got? And uh, we got in a truck and fired it up and started heading up the road and I was like dude what the hell was that and he's like I don't want to talk about it uh, sir. I was like dude I was like you know I'm cussing like a sailor I was like that's an effing Bigfoot dude I mean that's a freaking Sasquatch back here that just screamed at us he's like I don't want to talk about it <laughs> so I jump on the interstate it's about 35 miles there or so from there back to my house and he don't talk to me at all the whole way home. Wow. And I still haven't talked to him until it just, it was crazy because I was on uh, another feller's podcast. His name's Ry Voss. He's starting up his new pod. He was at uh, the Lost Frequency podcast. Well, I was talking to him a week or so ago, and uh, that feller actually got a hold of me. Huh. It's been a long time. And he just straight to it. You been catching any fish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, I mean, it's not been a good year. 2023 was not a good year for me for catfishing. But anyways, yeah, I thought it was weird, man. I haven't heard no more out of him. But he's just asking me if I've been. He but... didn't address the roar when he called you, did he? No. Yeah. No, he just messaged me on Messenger. Oh, okay. On Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I thought about just saying, hey, you remember that? That Sasquatch we experienced down there. I was like, man, you probably tell everybody I'm a crazy man or something. I don't know what it is. But, I mean, I've heard that before. Some people, they just don't want to deal with it. Like, they shut down in a way. They're like, no, nope, not dealing with it. We're not talking about that. It's weird. It's really weird. I, it's very similar to the way, like I said, my brother reacted to that cat. And, the, you know, maybe the way yeah. your, your mom reacted. Yeah. It's just like, not for them somehow. I don't know. It's It's weird. It's really weird. I mean, I've always just been the kind of person, you know, I mean, I see a ghost or, you know, something, anything. I'm telling my buddies. Mm -hmm. I've even opened my mouth at work about this. Yeah, I learned real quick. That's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Got made fun of for a couple of weeks. I don't let it bother me, but, you know, it still kind of, you know, pissed you off a little bit. Yeah. You know, making fun of me. I'm like, yeah. come on, guys. This ain't like freaking high school. Come yeah. on. You know, you think you can kind of trust people you know you work around them for several years and then they start treating you like you're an idiot yeah i don't 
take too well to that. I met some kayakers. I was out hiking and met some kayakers and just struck up a conversation with them. We talked for a long time, maybe 20 minutes or something, just shooting the shit, you know, just talking. And, and I was asking about kayaking yeah. creeks and stuff because I've never, I've never done that, and I'd like to start. We're having a great rapport, great back and forth. They're super nice. They're like, oh, you should come out. You know, I'll, I'll take you kayaking. I'll teach you how to do it, all this stuff. And then, you know, I said, hey, you guys ever experience anything weird out there? And they're like, like what? And I was like, I don't know. You know, I'm kind of interested in Bigfoot and all that stuff. They packed up their kayaks, didn't say another word to me, and drove off. <laughs> I was like, okay. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's just crazy how, you know, some people are just so narrow-minded to things. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just weird people you know yeah some people just i mean i mean how you can even say something about a ghost or even you know how ufos and aliens and all that stuff but the the government's released all that stuff here mm -hmm. the past year or so i've talked to guys at work and they're like i don't believe in any of that yeah oh yeah Getting back to it, yeah, that was a, a terrifying experience. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, I didn't go back down there fishing for quite some time. And uh, shortly, at, well, it was probably a month or so, if I'm remembering right. You know, me and my, I got a, a real good buddy, Tim. You know, he's he's like a brother to me, and he helps me with anything I need help with. I help him with anything. He's like, we're going fishing. Cause me and him fish all the time together, and we've had experiences together too you know i tell you we went down there i was nervous as a tick down there just oh man it took a while to kind of get over it and then yeah got over it and well anyways we went down there whatever i wasn't very comfortable so maybe the following weekend or so he's i was like dude i was like let's just go to the lake down the road up here from my house it's about i don't know less than 10 miles away and I was like, let's just go up there and catch channel cats or something. I know they're not monster fish, but they're still fun to catch. And let's just get the hell out of the house. So I'm all packed up. And, of course, Tim's always late. <laughs> so he comes rolling in late. He's mad, cussing. Come on, you know, we load up. We're driving my car. You know, I live out here. and It's Amish country out here. And the closer you get over to that lake, they're everywhere over there. So we're going down past all the Amish's houses, and it turns into a gravel road. And this gravel road's up on top of the, the big giant ridges over there, and it's, I don't know, it's national for it. It's, a lot of it's forestry. Mm -hmm. And there's some people own little chunks of it in between here and there. Well, anyways, we're going down through that gravel road. It's woods on both sides. And, you know, I always enjoyed my whole life driving down them gravel roads. It's just nice driving down the road. You got trees all up around you. It's like driving down a tunnel almost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you get down to the bottom and then you take your right turn and it goes back to pavement at the bottom. And uh, it's a dead end road. It goes back to this lake. You know, it's got a big, nice parking lot. It's got two parking lots one for boat trailers and just another just regular parking lot. And the boat ramp's in the middle of the two. Well, we, uh, we're coming down the road there, and it's just like a little little hump. You drive over there, and my buddy Tim's like, dude, I just seen orange eyes out there in the woods right there to the right. You know, I was just driving, and we were going like, I don't know, 20 mile an hour. I didn't see him. Is this nighttime? Uh, I didn't see him. Yeah, well, because he was running late. You know, we usually like to get down there about an hour before dark, you know, okay. get to our spot start getting set up and stuff i left that part out so yeah it's pretty much dark i mean there's still a little bit of a twilight off in the distance from the sun's not the sun's down but you know what i mean yeah yeah got the twilight out there a little bit well he sees these orange eyes and he's like dude they're huge i was, well, I was like i didn't see it we get down there and get parked and he's like dude and he's like shine a spotlight up there and stuff you know we carry spotlights with us and and then, uh, you know, I'm a miner. I work in the uh, rock quarries. So uh, 
I've got this one. It's a it's a, hot, a headlamp, and it's just got one LED block in the middle of it. I could shine that thing freaking 500 yards. I mean, it's just a beam of light, and it just lights up everything in its path. And he's like, dude, I'm telling you, I've seen orange eyes up there. I was like, I was like, I believe you, man. He was getting pissed off at me. I was just like, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, me and him, you know, we're we're pretty hard on each other. We give each other a hard way to go. You know, he's. I was like, I mean, dude. I was like, I mean, you seen it? You seen? It? I mean, I get you. I mean, I didn't see it, but okay. Well, anyways, we get on down there and find our little spot we like to fish at and get our stuff set up. You know, normal routine there. Yeah, we actually start catching fish. We're the only people there. We're pretty happy about that. You know, it's it's always nice when you got the whole lake to yourself. It's yeah. a pretty good sized lake. And we're down on the dam, about I don't know, a little more than halfway down, pretty close to where the spillway is to it. And I don't know exactly the point that we decided to just shine the light. You know, we you didn't hear no noise or nothing, and just I don't know. I guess occasionally we just like to shine our light. And uh, Tim shined that light over, and he said, he hollered at me. He's like, there it is. I mean, it was about 200 yards away, give or take a little bit. I mean, it's a pretty good distance. But right up on that little hillside there, right where he seen it, where we drove through, standing there right beside the tree with its arms down, just, just standing straight up with its arms next to its sides, big old orange eyes glowing and we were both just like holy shit. wow you know and it, it was eye shine it was from the light shining a, on him you know you take a, the light he did, they weren't glowing which you know i don't doubt anybody that has seen anything like that but in this case it was eye shine it was humongous dude my youngest daughter is six years old we just measured her the other day she's three foot six and, you know, I put the ruler on top of her head there at the corner of the kitchen and put a mark on the wall, you know, like everybody used to do back in the day. Sure. She thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> but anyway, as what I'm getting at is that the way I could compare it, if I was up there beside that guy, and I'm five foot ten, it would be like my daughter standing next to me. Wow. It was a big, big creature. And I was just like, holy shit. And we were both just like, what the hell do we do? Yeah. Well, I mean, it just stood there staring at us. So we're talking, this, that, the other. Well, here comes a Jeep or a Jeep or a truck. I can't remember which one. There's two vehicles in the story. Well, this vehicle comes down the road. We'll just say the first one's a Jeep. I mean, they're hauling ass down the road there. We live out here in the boonies. So people sitting around the house drinking or whatever, a couple buddies. They're like, well, hell, let's go down to the lake and go fishing. You know, who knows? <laughs> well, these guys, they get down there. Well, the creature's gone. Did we shine the light back up there after they drove through? Okay. Well, it's gone. They back down the boat ramp, and they just parked their truck on the side or their Jeep or whichever one it was on the side of the boat ramp there. And you can, we can hear them. It's about the same distance across there. It's about 200 yards or so from where we were at to the boat ramp, the caddy corner across the lake there. You know, you hear them getting their fishing poles out and stuff, stumbling around. They're talking. Well, they're doing whatever. I mean, this is only in a matter of a couple minutes. They're grabbing all their shit back up and throwing it in their vehicle. Hmm. They jump in there, slam the doors, and they haul ass right back out of there. Wow. We were both like, Holy shit, that that thing was over doing something. I mean, we never heard any growls or nothing. So, I mean, it's hard to say what happened to them, but they were gone. Well, Tim or me, one of us, shined the light back up there again. He's back again. Mm. Just staring at us. And we've caught several fish too in this process we'll set our poles up and pole holders straight up and down and we'll put glow sticks on them with uh, electrical tape so when you get a hit you know it bends over you know you see it real good <laughs> we've caught several fish throughout this time here and you know we're, we're we're pretty paranoid too but i don't know we never did really get scared 
I mean, I guess because the distance, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not really sure. Uh, but anyways, here comes another vehicle. And the same exact thing happens again. They start getting their stuff out. Next thing you know, man, they're slamming stuff around, hauling ass out of there. So they take off again, too. <laughs> it's getting pretty late. I would say it, it was probably after midnight, maybe later. We shine the light back up there, and he's standing there again, man. Wow. We normally carry pistols with us and stuff, but for some reason we didn't have pistols with us that night which you know it wouldn't have did us any good anyway more than likely yeah i was gonna but, ask you like you something, know, something that big i mean unless you hit in the eye or something i mean yeah, yeah. i mean I, that's, i've heard stuff like that on like wes's show wes would be like shoot him right in the face and i'm like well i mean if it if it had to be done it had to be done i mean i don't got right. nothing against anybody that wants to do that kind of thing but i don't really take no pleasure in killing anything well, yeah sure anymore i mean i don't hunt anymore or nothing but anyway getting back to the the lake there so i mean we've watched those people get scared out or well that's what we thought happened anyway i mean there's a sasquatch standing down there i mean what else could have happened what is it? so we ain't caught any fish in probably 30 minutes to an hour at that point if i remember right and that's when we're like well might as well just call tonight, but I'm like, well, then that's kind of like when it, it kicked us right in the ass right there. Like we got our cars parked right down there at where he's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was probably within 50 yards of our uh, car, Ooh. of my car. So we were both kind of like, Oh man, I don't remember the exact conversation. Cause you know, at that point it's kind of the fear is really kicking in. I mean, there's, I mean, basically a giant standing down there. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we got our poles reeled up and stuff like that and, you know, gathered our backpacks and we kept shining our light up there. You know, he was there while we were messing with stuff and then just out of nowhere, he's he's gone again. That's worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you want to know where he is. We climb up to the top of the dam because we was down a little bit lower, you know, down closer to the water. So we climb up to the top, which they keep it mowed. It's a pretty nice lake down there. And they keep that grass mowed. So we got up there on the top, and we're shining all down the bottom. Because, you know, we're not taking any steps further. <laughs> we're going to try to find this dude. I can't see him, so we take off walking. And, you know, I don't really remember the conversation, but I know my plan. I was probably going to just try to trip Tim or something and run, <laughs> if, you know, something bad. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I made that up. But... <laughs> No, we get down there to the corner of the dam, and, you know, we're probably within 80 yards or so of where he was standing at throughout the whole encounter. I know I was shaking in my boots a little bit. and We got down to the car there, and it was like, well, I'm going to shine my light. You put your stuff in the car, and then whenever you get your stuff in there, you shine your light. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how the conversation went because that's what we did. So we, we kept a light up there the whole time just – panning all around us and it never did advance on us and we did not see it again and we got in the car and you know it felt a little safer once we was in the car i, I mean i don't know why i just i got a little bitty subaru car i mean this thing could probably pick it up and throw it right we kind of cruised up through there and yeah you know, never did see anything again and my buddy tim he's on the pasture side so he's shining over the top of the car with the spotlight yeah nothing we drove on out of there with uh, probably, I mean, it changed both our lives at that point. You know, we know 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. Could you see, I know it was, you know, 200 yards away, but could you see hair and everything? Or were you just getting sort of the, you know, sort of basic idea of the, you know, upright something? Yeah, you just getting your, your basic ID, just like the, the black cutouts, you know, you see people put on the side of their barns or something uh -huh. like that. But I mean, I mean, it's eyes, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, they'll raise their hand up or something like that to block the light or they'll squint their eyes. I mean, this dude just kept his eyes wide open the whole time. I mean, never squinted them. Even when we had the light on, I mean, I don't even think I noticed him ever blink while we had the light on him. I mean, there's no way it was a person or some kind of 
a loose cow or a, a horse. I, mean, I, I told my buddy Tim, I said, you know, I've seen eye shine like that, similar, I mean, the size of the eyes. We used to spotlight when we were kids, you know, teenagers, we'd drive around in our cars and spotlight the fields out here. I mean, it's legal in Indiana as long as you ain't got no firearms in your car while you spotlight. We'd shine deer all the time. You know, just something most redneck boys did for fun. And uh, there was a fella that had uh, some of them uh, Texas Longhorns. I think that's what they're called. The big bulls with giant horns oh, that yeah, stick out yeah. sideways. And that thing, it had some big old, like, bluish green eyes. But, I mean, that's probably about the size they were. I mean, just huge eyes. Uh, I, was, I mean, I can I can see it right now. I mean, just like it was, it just happened five minutes ago. I can see it in my mind. I mean, I'll never forget it. And I mean, and this happened after the being roared at down there at the, the river. I mean, I knew for a fact that time, I mean, that's for sure what it was in my opinion. Right. right. I mean, you know, I didn't, didn't see it, but I mean, what the hell else? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if it was a lion, it would have, it wouldn't have exploded a, a log against a tree and, it right. would have probably jumped on me and killed me. Right, right. Anyways, yeah, we've, uh, you know, me and Tim, we've, we've talked about that a thousand times. And, you know, it just, it's never different. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, that day we became, uh, as people say, knowers. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My buddy Tim, he's kind of a <laughs> toe. And, you know, like I, like I said, we bicker back and forth and give each other hell constantly he was down there it was before we had the, the actual sighting and seen it with our eyes and him and his son had went down there to catch some bluegill from the other parking lot there's a little sidewalk that goes up the side there and they're sitting on that sidewalk trying to catch bluegill for going down to the river because we'll use bluegill whole bluegill for bait you know he likes to make fun of just about anybody and anything just, just being a jerk well, he liked to. He used to do this. He don't do it now because it scared the hell out of him. He would just try to like mock the Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. The sound he'd make, he'd just go "hoo" or you know, as loud as he could do it. <laughs> well, him and his boys there, you know, his boy at that time was probably like nineteen or so, maybe twenty, and uh, he does his little goofy call he likes to do. Well straight across on the other side of the lake and this is in the summertime there all everything is all greened up you know all the leaves and stuff you can't see nothing on that hillside which we've hiked it many times there's a trail goes all the way around it It takes about two hours to walk it you just stay steady walking and when you're on the other side you can see all the way across the lake no problem but when you're on that side of the lake at the parking lot you can't see into the hillside Mm -hmm. well he starts hearing something just stomping around whatever and it just takes off through the woods and the like everybody always says it sounded like a freaking bulldozer he said a rhinoceros that's what he said Mm -hmm. it's like a rhino just tearing through the woods and it came all the way around right to them where they were at and nothing no sounds at all the next thing you know they hear big old stick land right behind them in the grass wow. right behind the sidewalk yeah they grabbed their poles up yanked them in real quick and got them in the car and they got the hell out of there <laughs> i like that story i wish i'd have been there for that <laughs> uh, you know i do and i don't you know and, yeah yeah you know we really don't go out i mean we have went out a couple of times just trying to like for instance he he said it I was on the other side of the lake and it come through like a rhino. Well, we went in there and we walked it at a decent rate of speed. You could be an athletic person that runs, you know, the track or at the gym or whatever, you know, every day. And it would still probably take you 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. 15 minutes. I mean, if you were just a badass that could run through the woods, it's a pretty long distance from that point to the other side. I mean, if it was just straight across the water, I mean, it would only be like 120 yards or so. All the way around, it's probably a good quarter mile. But I don't know. That was uh, We went in there and looked at it at that time. and We've uh, 
knocked on the trees back there once and we got some knocks right back to us and then we knocked some more and then they never would knock again well, but who knows yeah yeah it's pretty weird because i don't know but he used a wooden bat which you know i don't have no desire to really beat on trees or howl out there or I ain't trying to piss them off. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super interested in it, you know, just from experiencing this stuff. But, I mean, it's, it scares the hell out of me. You know, I went and, after that experience stuff, I went and bought me a, a 45 Ruger. I carry it now. So, anytime I'm fishing, I, I carry it with me. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> not, you know, like I said, not that it do me any good, but at least I'll try. You know, yeah. something does bad happen. Yeah. But nothing's really been super negative i mean it's been kind of bluff charge you kind of i mean i don't know i've never really been bluff charged by any animals i mean uh, in indiana i mean we got deer and corn a lot of corn <laughs> <laughs> we had a black bear come through here a couple of years ago and i think about everybody in town about was just having a heart attack they was in love with this little bear <laughs> and then the game wardens were chasing him and everybody and their brothers trying to get pictures of him, you know, so they could post them on Facebook and stuff. We seen the bear. And it came up through from Kentucky. I mean, he was just a little feller. He wasn't very big, little black bear. I mean, every picture you seen the little thing, he's just terrified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he was scared to death. They ran that little thing. I don't, I don't remember where he ended up at. But there is mountain lions here. I mean, I don't care what any game warden says or police officer or any you know anybody i mean i got a friend actually straight through the woods across from my house and i'm sitting out in my car right now he got one on his trail cam you know it was probably a 25 35 pound cat it wasn't huge but it's definitely a big cat you know just your normal color mountain lion mm-hmm. you know he don't live I mean, I don't know, as the crow flies, maybe a mile or so through the woods. This was several years ago. And, you know, like you were saying about your you and your brother, you seen the one. Well, my buddy Tim pulled into my road off the highway because I live about, I don't know, a quarter mile at the most from the highway right up here. And whenever he turned off on my road, there's two ponds off to the side of the road and in between the two ponds on the little hillside there he seen two mountain lions they're just laying down right there <laughs> and he took pictures of them you know it was a little bit of a distance <laughs> probably a little over 100 yards or so you know phones just don't do no justice for yeah. anything. but you could see the little like the triangle-ish shaped ear in a way i guess the way i don't know how to describe it really I mean, it's what it looked like. It, they didn't look like a couple dogs laying out there, but I was like, man, I was like, that's too close. That is it. Too close to the house. So, I mean, I've got four daughters, and, you know, I'm super open with them. With, you know, I've heard so many stories and stuff. I'm like, you hear something knocking on your window or something? Don't look. Come and get your dad. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which, fortunately, none of that's happened. But, oh, for them anyways. But. One of my daughters, my second daughter, she's uh, 13, and uh, last winter, she came outside, because we always uh, leave our bottled waters out on the porch while it's cold, and uh, she stepped outside. It was around midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning or something, and she actually heard one whooping down in the holler down across the road from my house. We were going to the, the grocery store one day, and I'd and uh, put uh, Sasquatch Chronicles on, and, you know, in his intro, it's got that, Whoo! Oh, yeah, yeah. And she just looked at me, and she's like, I heard that back in the woods. I was like, why the hell didn't you tell me? She's like, well, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> she's like, was that a Sasquatch? I said, well, I mean, I don't know what you heard. I mean, it, I was like, it could have been one of the Amish boys. And she's like, well, it was midnight or so, because I got Amish that live right across the street from me over here, and they're always out there yodeling, and uh-huh. making all kinds of noise. There, There's a whole bunch of young ones over there. They crack me up. I'll be out smoking a cigarette on the porch, and they'd be over there yodeling away. And <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty funny to hear them. <laughs> but, but anyways, yeah, I thought that was crazy. And then also, I guess it was last year, 
that Christmas, my youngest sister, her water pipes froze up on her trailer. So her and her boyfriend and her son came up here and it was on uh, Christmas Eve. So they stayed the night with us. And uh, my sister had went outside for something and she came back in and she said, I just heard the most demonic growl come from the woods across the street. And I was like, well, I said, then <laughs> I said, there is a big fellers over there. She's like, what do you mean? I said, the Sasquatches. She said, oh, hell. Well, I said, I'm not bullshitting you. She's like, really? And I was like, well, I mean, did you really? She's like, that was pretty scary sounding. She's like, it sounded like a monster out of a movie. Huh. She's like, I'm not going back outside. And, you know, way before that, I got an LED pole light on my electric pole from the RMC right out here in front of my house. My whole front yard is lit up. I still haven't got my backyard lit up like I want yet. But anyway, there's uh, it's been a couple of years ago. My wife worked clothing store for a little while, but she was working late. And uh, she'd get home around 11, midnight, somewhere in that area. And uh, I was staying out on the porch smoking a cigarette. I mean, it was probably 1030, close to 11 or so. She'd be home in you know, a short amount of time. I don't know what it was, but something, it just caught my attention. And I just looked over at the side of my driveway. That was before I had this light out here. And I never turned the porch light on. I just let the stars light up everything for me if they're out. And something just comes out across the road from my house, runs straight across the road right down the side of my yard, and passed behind my house. Well, I got an old coon dog. She's a red bone, and she's on a run lead. It's about a 60-foot-long run, and uh, she barks at everything, drive you insane, just boo, boo, just nonstop all the time and everything, and drives me insane. It's my wife's dog. I was like, I was like, that deer was getting it, you know, because that's, that's just the first thing that came to my mind. It was just a, a, sh- a, black, sh- a black figure shadow. Anyway, it just books it down the side of the driveway there, and I was just like, damn, that deer was it getting it, because, I mean, that's that's the first thing that popped in my head was a deer. So I'm waiting for the, the old dog to just lose her mind down there, and it don't happen. She don't start barking. I'm like, what the hell? And, dude, I started hearing scratching on my shingles, like right behind me, because I was facing out my front yard, looking towards the woods i mean i wasn't never got a creepy feeling or nothing after when it ran through but who knows what it was really it sounded heavy on my <laughs> roof like you know i could guess like like an owl or not even an owl maybe more like an eagle something with some big old claws <laughs> i mean it was just making that scratching sound my scratching sound on my shingles i said the hell with this i flipped my cigarette and i went in the house you know, my wife came home, and, you know, she came right in the house. And, oh, my God. And I started telling her, and she's like, well, she's like, there's those little brown birds. I mean, they're little bitty dudes. Uh-huh. They like to hop around on the roof all the time doing stuff. We got bird feeders out here, and they're always out crapping all over my handrails and my porch and stuff. Just got a new paint job on my Jeep this week. Had a <laughs> army of them come through. Oh, yeah. Well, I was telling my wife about it, you know, and she's just like, man, that's them little birds. I was like, them little birds ain't going to make a loud enough scratching sound on the shingles. That's going to scare me in the house. Right. right. <laughs> well, maybe so. Who knows? But anyway, well, that's all that happened there. Well, it wasn't even maybe a couple days later, maybe the next weekend. I can't remember exactly. Well, my wife likes to have a couple of drinks you know, every now and then. So she was over at our neighbors, which we went to school with and stuff when we were young. And, you know, me and my wife's been together since high school, you know, about 20 years now. She was over having a couple of drinks with them or whatever. I done went to bed, you know, like I told you, I go to bed early normally because I get up so early. She would come walking back from the neighbors over there. It was around midnight or so. And I was already, well, when she come walking across the yard, you know, our neighbors, they're only a couple hundred feet away from the other side of her house across the yard. And she come walking through there and she just 
wasn't paying attention to nothing. You know, she's just walking home, had a couple of drinks. She's feeling good. She's ready to go to bed. Nothing on her mind. She just wanting to get to the bed. Comes walking through the yard and just dunk, 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 dunk. Comes just right past her. And she kind of froze for a second, best I can remember her saying. And she was almost to our back porch. Well, there wasn't a back porch at that time. There was just a little set of steps. We built a little back porch back here now. But she got up to the corner of the house there, and I have – you know, I told you I was a fisherman. I got a big stand-up deep freezer I used to keep on a pallet out there beside the plug-in on the side of the house, and I keep all my, my bait in there, my all my frozen fish I use for catfish bait. Mm-hmm. Well, she kind of put her back to the house, and that's what she said, that it was on the other side of that freezer. She said she just knew it. She, she kept hearing something there. It's only like 15 feet. Probably not, probably like more like 10 feet, 10 or 12 feet from the door at that time because it's on the back porch now. But then she said she just – it freaked her out. <laughs> she, she got in the house and she you know, woke me up and she was telling me that. She's like, go out there and see us. There is no way I'm going out there. <laughs> I was like, you made it in the house. You're okay. It didn't attack you. So, so we went on to the bed. I mean, and you think about that, you know, if it was a person, you wouldn't hear that football. That that nice. But she never seen it, and it ran right beside her. Like she said, it was close. That's it. Really close to her. I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe it could have been paranormal or something. Or yeah, I don't. I would say more. I favor the, you know, the Bigfoot side of it. But. That's it. I would like to thank our patrons who make Strange Familiars possible. Thank you so much, patrons. Without you, we could not do the show. If you like what we do and you'd like to help us continue to make Strange Familiars, you can become a patron at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. All of our patrons get commercial-free versions of the weekly show as well as extra episodes every month. We do at least one. Sometimes we do more. Once again, it's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. You can also subscribe via Apple Podcasts. They have a program there called Patron of the Strange, and Apple Podcast subscribers get the commercial-free weekly episodes as well as the extra shows monthly. And thanks again, patrons. While I'm thanking people, I'd like to thank Matthew S. and Ando B. for their donations. Super helpful. Thank you so much. That's another way you can help the show. There's a paypal.me button in the show notes under every episode. You can click that and make a one-time donation. Once again, thanks to those who have given donations. You know, we've got uh, their caddy cornered across from us over here, and he's got, oh, I think, close to 100 acres over there, and most of it's woods. And I used to mushroom hunt over there quite a bit when I was a kid with my dad. But on further back in that back holler back here, you can stand on my porch, and it sounds like wolves are back here, just howling like wolves do, you know, like, like in a movie, you know, mm-hmm. howling at the moon or whatever. And I mean, I did look it up, and I guess I think back in the '60s, I think maybe the '70s, the game wardens or DNR or whatever released a bunch of gray wolves into Indiana. But I mean, I've never seen one. Uh-huh. But I hear these over there all the time, and you know they get kind of weird tones to them too. It might just be me. I mean, I don't know. But every time I come out on the porch, I try to. I want to get a video or, you know, just to record the audio of it. And they shut up every time I turn my phone on. I don't know if it's just coincidence or what, but yeah. I just did it earlier. My wife was out there smoking a cigarette, 
And they started, I went back in the door and grabbed my phone. As soon as I pulled up the camera and switched it to video, shut up. I mean, they didn't even howl, but five, six seconds, because I had my phone right there on my key rack right where you come in the door. And I, I was like, so I told her, I said, every time, every time I try to come out here and record these daggone things, I, I can't, can't yeah. get them. Yeah. There's something, I swear, about video. I, you know, I know you were just trying to capture the audio, but you, you were using your video to capture it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, there's, I swear, I don't know, this stuff just, video, that's why I don't think we're ever going to get a real clear video. Something about it just doesn't like it. I don't know how it knows. I don't. It's just, it's really weird. I can send you the link to it. There's a little recorder. It's under $40. I got it from Walmart, and it's uh, weatherproof, and I've been using them. I just been hiding them in the woods, and man, they work pretty well. And you can just—it's funny you say that because I was just telling my wife on the porch about I don't know twenty minutes before you called. I told her I said, you know, I hear them, them researchers and stuff. You know, they're always talking about putting their their audio recorders out in the woods in a Ziploc bag or whatever. And I'm pretty good buddies with the Amish feller over there. We get along just fine. He's—I was like, I want to put one of them recorders back here. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you, you got time, send, send these me are a cool. link you, for sure. You don't need a bag or anything. Like, cause I have other ones that are, that are a little nicer that I, I hate leaving out cause they're, you know, they're a little more expensive. Yeah. These things, you know, if you lose it, I mean, you don't want to lose 35 bucks, but whatever, you know what I mean? It, right. It is what it is, but they've been, I've tried them two different times now. They're, they sound qualities. It's not as good as a high quality, like a task cam recorder, like I use. But it's it's pretty good. I mean, I was kind of impressed. I mean, like, man, for thirty five bucks, and you just throw them out in the woods, don't have to worry about them. I like them. Huh. So, well, that yeah. sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I've asked the Amish about it over there. One time, he was over here doing something for the neighbor lady. He was working on her little shed, or he's doing something for her. And he was out there. I start talking to him and stuff, and I, I finally I said, I said, uh, I was like, what do you think about them wolves are howling over there? And he just kind of looked at me, and he's like, well, I don't know if them are wolves or not. And I was like, well, I mean, they sound pretty much like a, a wolf to me. I don't have a whole lot of experience with wolves, but, I mean, from what I've seen on TV, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds like wolves. And he said, like, well, he's like, the other night there's something out there. Then You know, they got little headlamps, too. I mean, just because they don't have electricity don't mean they don't use batteries. They right, do. Right, yeah. He's got little headlamps and stuff, but they're not very bright. But he said something had his horses all stirred up real bad over there. I mean, this was a, a year or so ago I was talking to him about it. Well, anyway, I was like, well, I was like, it was around springtime because I asked him, I said, would you care if me and my buddy go back here and look for some mushrooms. I said, I used to go back here all the time when I was a kid with my dad. We used to find a whole bunch of them. He's like, my boys have been finding them back here. He's like, you're more than welcome to go back here. So, yeah, I, I loaded up my 30-30, my threw it over my shoulder, and my buddy Tim, he was carrying, I don't know, 9 millimeter or 45 or something. And we went back here. And we got all the way back in that little holler back here. And, well, we didn't find no wolves or nothing, but Tim did find a humongous footprint back there uh -huh. that was, and you know, I mean, I'm an idiot, didn't take no pictures of it, but I set my water bottle in the heel of it, and you could have put another water bottle in front of it, uh -huh. and it would have fit right in it, and wow. it was probably about the same width if you turn the water bottle sideways in the footprint. This is... I mean, it was beat down with the rain a little bit. It was in the side of uh, the little creek down there. I mean, the creek's only, it's just a little little brook, really. I mean, it's pretty much dried up, but it's got a little bit of water in it. Just on the side of the bank there, the bank was about maybe a foot, little little hump right there going up into the woods in that spot. And it was a good inch and a half, two inches or so there, in the ground I mean, we stomped on the ground there and you know we couldn't do nothing to it mm -hmm. but i mean you could see the toes and the foot i mean the, i mean it just i mean it just looked like a person's footprint in the sand but in the dirt <laughs> that's what i was like holy shit, dude wow he's like i told you they were back here well he always tells me it's, it's dog man over there <laughs> i'm like oh god don't say that yeah right which Go knock on some wood. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that. 
do not want to, as far as I know anyway. But, I mean, we've looked on Google Maps over there, and, I mean, the closest house is a couple miles over that way. And, I mean, there ain't no dog kennels. I mean, we was kind of snooping around, zoom in on people's property and stuff yeah, on yeah, the, yeah. the Google Maps, just trying to see if they had some big dog kennels or something. You know, maybe somebody has wolves over there or something. But, but I mean, they're too far away, for one, the houses are. And down in that holler, down through there, there ain't nothing down there but woods, and there, there's a creek that runs down through there. So, I don't know. And yeah. I, I mean, I've been been hearing this for a couple of years. I mean, it's every day. Every single day you hear the wolves howling over there. Just don't, uh, I don't know, I don't really pay too much mind to it well, anymore. We, but, you know, I, I have been trying to catch up, one, trying to get the audio of it. And like I said, every damn time they shut up. Yeah. We had a pretty crazy night in a ghost town in a national or a state forest here, rather, called Pandemonium. And I woke up at 3 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning to, to Wood Knox and had all these crazy howls and, and stuff going on around us and something walking around our camp. So it's pretty wicked, scary night. And somebody was listening and, and I said, I, you know, if anybody can identify these howls and somebody said, those are wolf howls. I said, we, we haven't had wolves in Pennsylvania since, you know, late 1700s, maybe mid 1800s at the latest, yeah. the last wolf was killed. So it's interesting. But this person was like, no, yeah. I live, I live next to wolves. You know, that's, that's a wolf howl, but I don't think they were huh. wolves. Yeah, I like to just call these wolves because I don't like to feed into what my buddy Tim's trying to put on me. Right, sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh God, that'd be a nightmare. <laughs> There's some morning, you know, because I I get up at four, you know, I'm usually I come out come out the house and start my car around four fifteen, four twenty, let it run for a little bit, get warmed up a little bit, and some mornings everything's just fine, and some mornings I come out and I mean it is just creepy out here uh-huh. i mean it's always dead quiet unless somebody's driving up the highway i mean it's not a busy highway in the, through the throughout the night and right right early morning hours just when people are commuting to work mainly or through the middle of the day but anyways i mean there ain't a whole lot of noise out here and yeah it's uh it's pretty spooky and then every once in a while I'll come out and the roosters are crowing over there at the Amish's at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> it don't make sense. I mean, they, I mean, they don't do it often, but I mean, I've, there'd be a handful of them out there crowing. I mean, I don't know. It's, I just always thought it's kind of weird. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, I know we can't, like, supposedly, I've heard that the Amish have great stories about this stuff. And at least here, we can't get them to talk. They well, call us I, English, and they don't really like talking much to, you know, the, the English, they yeah. say. Well, I mean, they'll, they'll bull with you and cut up with you about just about anything but i have you know i've ran into several of the amish boys down there at the lake and look you guys uh you guys better watch out uh, there's a uh, big wood monkeys down here i always like to call them wood monkeys mm-hmm. <laughs> which i you know i don't think they are monkeys but right right i don't know, i just call them that sure my grandpa always called them wood boogers he was from eastern kentucky but anyway, I, I've said stuff to them boys. I'm like, you ever seen anything weird like that or anything? And they're like, no. The only one I got to talk a little bit, he said that they had shot a deer one time. And then when they got to it, something had put a big old gash in the side of it. You know, and it wasn't from their bullet hole. It was just like something cut it open or something like that. So right. He said, we thought that was pretty odd, but, you know, who knows that. Yeah. But yeah. a story about the eastern Kentucky – where my my grandfather lived down in well he was my step grandpa my dad's stepdad they lived up on top of the side of this mountain in Buckhorn Kentucky and I mean it's it's Hazard County like where they did Dukes of Hazard I think's where they did it at maybe not I don't know but anyways way well, my out favorite in the my favorite ballad nowhere. singer Gene Ritchie she's from Hazard County so I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah uh, so I'm familiar with it yeah it's, it was Hazard and I mean it's nothing compared to here. You know, we got some pretty big hills down here in southern Indiana. You get over to eastern Kentucky, they got some big old hills down there. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess you can call it mountains, I guess. But they had like, I mean, like one lane roads up the side of these big giant hills. I mean, a sting wide trailer down at the bottom of the hill, you know, looked like a just a little stick. I mean, a little bitty. 
And I was always scared of that when I was a little kid. But when we would go up there, you know, their driveway, you had to drive across a pretty big creek. It was probably about six inches deep. And you climb up this, I mean, the hill is like straight up and down almost. And I remember one time my dad had, we had a little Ford Escort when I was a kid. And there was a big boulder in the middle of their driveway. It stuck out a little bit. And dad got the oil pan on the car. We got hung up on it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that tells you anything about where they live. They lived way up on the top of that hill all by themselves up there, a little house up there. Grew all their own vegetables and all that stuff. And my great grandparents lived there with them too. They had a old tobacco barn way on up past the house at the top of the hill up there. And my grandpa Don, he always said, he said, don't be going up there, boy. He said, that booger's up there. I was like, you know, and I was a little kid, you know, six years old, seven maybe. And I was just like, well, what's a booger? He's like, he's a big, hairy man. Yeah. And, you know, he just, the tone of his voice and stuff, he just always sounded real sarcastic. And, you know, he just always thought he was full of it, you know. And right. He's yeah. like, he comes down here sometimes. He said he'll peel up pieces of wood with his toenails on the porch. I'll never forget him telling me that when I was huh. a little kid. <laughs> I was like, huh. He's like, he'd dig in the porch with his toenails. And I was like, it's a big man? He's like, it's a big hairy man. He says, it's the wood booger that lives up there. He said, you don't go up there now. And he's like, I'm telling you. You know, he always said he'd tan your hide if you went up there. Uh -huh. And they were real strict on us when we were there because they had rattlesnakes and copperheads everywhere down there. They had big old giant boulders all over the place down around their house. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen my grandpa shoot rattlesnakes. And uh, he made bullets for his gun and made the snake shot for his pistol oh wow with the little bbs in yeah, there yeah. he made them all himself and wow yeah and one time we was playing on one of them big rocks down there and there was a whole big mess of copperheads in there and he went out there and just started blasting them and he dug them out with a stick i think i think there were six or seven of them they were mm. all together in one spot yeah eastern kentucky's a kind of a scary place to be really <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing I wrote to you on the email. It's something I never talked about, too, was on any other podcast. Was when we was on the White River with me and a, a different buddy, we was on his little boat. And the White River is it's shallow, then it's deep, shallow. It's got little deep spots all over the place, and it's all sand bottom. And the water is real fast, even when in the middle of summertime when the water's down. And we was down past the... A pretty good sized bridge down there and we was tied up to a tree limb and uh, my buddy had just caught a little bitty flathead he's probably about two pounds just a little bitty fish we were deciding to move and we got this little clip thing it just clips on the end of a branch we got some paracord on it and we let our boat out to get away from the tree and just hold us on there so we don't have to use an anchor <laughs> i started pulling the boat up towards the tree and i've never smelt before but, you know, just like what people's reported, uh -huh. I've just heard on podcasts and stuff, you know, just that that sweet, like rotten meat kind of, that, just that sweet, raunchy smell, almost with a little bit of septic tank, uh -huh. piss kind of. It had a little bit of armpit smell to it, like you've been at the zoo and you see all the orangutans in there and it just smells like, oh, God, like nobody's worn de deodorant their whole life right you know yeah. it's just got that funky armpit smell just a mixture of all that and, and i was well aware of the sasquatch stuff and all that by then and you know when, when i smelt it oh man i just got the like a chill through my body like holy crap you know we live out in the country everybody out here has got septic tanks we don't have sewer mm -hmm. so I mean, you know what a septic tank smell, or you know the, the I know. gray water that comes yeah. out the lateral lines. Or know what that smell smells like. Some people's stuff gets backed up all yep. the time. Yeah, I grew up on a farm. I'm all too familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big black spot out in the yard. Yeah, yeah. don't run the lawnmower through that. Yeah. So I mean, it wasn't that smell, but I mean, it had a, a hint of it, a little bit of kind of like sewage smell. Uh -huh. And just instantly, I was just like, holy. Shit. And my buddy, he's like, you know, I was telling him, I was like, dude, I was like, you smell that? He said, yeah. He's like, that's rotten. 
He's like, what the hell is that? I said, dude, I think that's a Bigfoot. He's like, oh, hell, here we go. He thinks it's a possibility, but he ain't going to say he believes in it until he actually sees it. And I said, sure. I get it. But, you know, I've told him all my stories and stuff, and he don't – yeah, I mean, he listens to me, but, you know, he's just still like, eh, okay. So, anyways, we get unhooked from that tree, and he fires up the, the boat motor, and we go back up river, past the boat ramp, past where our car – or the truck was with the trailer. We go up on this little corner, and we anchored out in that spot because it was uh, – a little more deeper and the current wasn't near as strong right there in that spot so we're sitting there and it's probably i don't know we've probably been sitting there 30 minutes at at least anyway and there's no wind you know it's just a normal calm night stars are all out and stuff and just out of nowhere just bang it sounded like a big branch something just snapped it yeah. You know, it's like I told you, I rode in the thing. Like, I mean, it sounded like a freaking shotgun go off. I mean, it was just that loud of a bang. And I about, you know, about rode out of the boat. It scared me so bad. I mean, we were just sitting there watching our poles, you know. I don't even think we were talking when it happened. And my buddy, he's like, oh, he's like, you know, branches fall out of trees all the time. I was like, I mean, yeah, I mean, they do, but... <laughs> I was like, I ain't ever heard one quite that. I mean, who knows? But, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was kind of odd. It was a loud break. I mean, I've heard loud breaks like that when I was used to deer hunting stuff, you know, before I really thought too much of, you know, anything. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, you know, I look back on that and I'm like, man, is there, I mean, there ain't no way a deer stepping on a, a big old round stick like that and bow, you know, break <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean i mean who knows who knows what it, what could really be happening there with that but and then there's another time me and him was out on his little boat we was in alton indiana it's far away from here over on the other side of cordon indiana over on the, the ohio river and we was in a a little river that runs into the ohio it's called the the little blue and we was down there at the mouth of it because it's like almost it was right around almost sixty foot deep right there at the mouth of it. You know, we was trying to get on some big old monster catfish right there. And we got there first thing in the morning. I think I called in to work that day just to go fishing. So, <laughs> and uh, it was foggy as hell. You couldn't see nothing. I was like, we wouldn't dare go out into the the main part of the river. And the river down at that end, it's way wider. I mean, the river's way wider than what it is up here closer to Louisville, where we usually fish at. It's pretty good distance away. Well, we're, we've been sitting there for a while, and my buddy, he caught a little striper. We you know, took a picture of it, let it go, and we're sitting there fishing. You know, like I said, it's, you know, it's so foggy, you can't see, but 30, 40 feet away from the boat. And we're at the mouth of the Little River going into Ohio. Well, there's a barge coming up river. And he's off in the distance there, and he's blaring his horn. He would hit his horn a couple of times, and then he would go for, I don't know, a couple minutes, five minutes maybe, and then he'd hit his horn two or three more times. But once he got up a little bit closer, he hit his horn. When he let off of it, it sounded like a woman just screaming like she someone was sticking a knife in her ribs just i mean like a band just the loudest like a, like in a horror movie mm-hmm. and i looked at my buddy i was like holy shit. and he hit that horn again and it screamed again hmm. and he hit the horn again it screamed again and i mean this is i bet it's over 300 yards from the mouth of that that little river we was in to the other side there. I mean, it's a long way, and it's a big, giant hillside. You know, and that it was screaming from the Kentucky side, which I don't know what the hell it was, but, you know, I've heard all kinds of people say about the, they sound like a woman being dragged by her hair, or, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah, you know, yeah. a woman screaming. Yeah, yeah, that's what we heard, and that's what I told my buddy. I was like, dude, that's, that's a freaking Sasquatch, you know, or I've heard quite a few shows on, uh, Wes's show, Sasquatch Chronicles, that people say that 
you know, they, they think that's the juveniles screaming like that or maybe the females or something. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know for sure. I don't do no research or nothing other than just listen to podcasts. I love listening to people's encounters and stuff. You know, I've listened to all of them. And then, you know, I've heard you mentioned many a times. And uh, just, you know, like I said, recently, I just started listening to your show. And, and I was like, I listened to like two of them. I was like, well, hell, I was like, I'm going to sub- subscribe to this one. I, I like this. So oh, you know, I've listened you, to probably probably 15 or so so far you know i I work 10 hours a day so you know all i got is time i just load dump trucks all day long well (laughs) look i don't want to keep up on that i know you get up early well i'd love to get your ghost tours if you'd rather just do next week at the same time we can do that you can get to bed it's up to you well there's too many to i mean we'd be on here another hour and a half or two hours you want to talk about that well yeah yeah i sent you sent you those pictures and stuff yeah if it's good with you we can just do next week at the same time is that cool yeah that's cool with me man all right let's do let's do it that then that way you get some sleep and we can catch those next week i've been wanting to talk about this stuff for a long time yeah that's why i reached out to you because i mean i you do everything on your show yeah Let's do next week then, same time. That's perfect for me. Right on, man. Sounds good. All right. Well, I'll see you, buddy. Okay, you have a good one. You too. Mm-hmm. See you. You're slacking off. I, <laughs> I don't think we can call it a curiosity of the week if you're not going to bring one for weeks at a time, Allison. I know. I'm really, I'm, I apologize. I'm still like kind of recovering from feeling sick. And mm-hmm. so um, that's the excuse I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not just pure laziness. No worries. I'm a classy lady. I mean, you saw my new Stanley cup, which is actually an old Popeye's cup filled with juice. <laughs> Oh, your Stanley! I'll be calling it my Stanley Cup. It's just like an old, it's a plastic Popeyes cup. I'm gonna keep it classy, Allison. Keeping it classy. Mm-hmm. That's how we roll. <laughs> well, I can say that the artwork for this episode will be up on Etsy. Someone's doing something. People can purchase that. Also on Etsy, other original art, other prints of my artwork. All of my books are up there, including apparitions, illustrations of the other, which we are down to. Maybe five copies now. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's many on the shelf over there. So if you want one of those, act soon. I'm going to take one or two of those and remark them. So really, they're going to be more expensive, obviously, with the remarks. So if you want one at the at the lower price. Now's the time. Yeah, act quickly. I'm not going to reprint them anytime soon. I may reprint more if I do like Apparitions 2 or mm-hmm. something. I may reprint Volume 1 at that time. But for now, it's gone. Once it's gone, it's going to be gone for a while. Let's see, Strange Familiars t-shirts are on Etsy, Strange Familiars mugs, patches, stickers. Allison has antique photographs up there. In the Flower Path section, we've got handmade paracord rosaries. I make them myself. Flowered Path t-shirts, petals and thorns, the little zine I did associated with the Flowered Path. And much more. Our Etsy shop name is Lost Grave. But if you type in Strange Familiars, our stuff sh- should come up. And Etsy's another way to support the show. All right. I believe I will have a show next week. I will probably drop it before I leave for Indiana. It will probably come early. I'm not entirely sure, though. It might. It might not happen. It might not happen, (laughs) or it might come later in the week. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I have to figure out how to break up the second part of Jacob's interview because it's even longer than this Mm -hmm. interview was. So it might be two episodes of his paranormal accounts. I might drop them together you know, mm-hmm. just two separate episodes but right together for everybody i'm not sure we'll have to figure out how we're going to do that and the week after that we'll have to see <laughs> this, this indiana is going to take a chunk out of my time for sure which i'm not complaining about looking forward to being out there any questions allison <laughs> bring me back a t-shirt i went to the witch sticker's house and all i got was this lousy t-shirt you got it we should bring back those t-shirts all right I guess that's it for now. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back soon with more Strange Familiars.
Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. If you want to hear more or purchase music, you can go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars. We're on Instagram, at strangefamiliars, one word, no underscore. You can find us on the web at strangefamiliars.com. And for merch, always go to strangefamiliars.com slash merch. Night, bird song as we wait.